It's time, Vagabug. Time to overthrow the Pretender. Maga, the Alchemist, is gone. It's time to claim the throne. Once. And for all. Ambush him when he's at his weakest. Whoa, whoa! Whoa, whoa! Take one of my asterisks. Love followers whoa, whoa. hostage. Whoa. Start by gathering your chosen orcs. The betray is strong and weak minded. He'll be easily swayed. Bagabug and the Betrayed have started a rebellion. They attacked me when I was at my weakest, when I was starting a stream. These are two of the strongest orcs that I've ever met. For those of you who don't know Bagabug, he's been my overlord since the first age of my channel. Baga came first and Bagabug joined shortly after. This orc was so powerful that even when Baga was at the height of his powers, he was still the overlord instead of Baga the Alchemist. Thinking about fighting this foe, send shivers down my spine. There's a reason I've not experimented with trying to bring back different versions of Bagabug. He's just that goddamn hard to kill. And he's enlisted the help of one of the original members of Baga's bandits, the Betrayed. The Betrayed has super orc-like strength, as well as being super durable and completely crazy. With the combined might of these two powerful orcs, they easily took me by surprise and killed me while I was wearing my weak armor. Once he's dead, attack the fort. He'll be too weak to defend it. I came back from the dead to find my fort under siege. Bagabug had timed his attack well. I'd be too weak to fend off these attackers. It was up to my orcs to defend the fortress. But Bagabug was one step ahead again. He'd already turned the majority of my guards against me. Ever since the death of Baga the Alchemist, morale has been down, and Bagabug utilized that. The majority of my captains and war chiefs had already fled. Enraged by this, I summoned the Manhunter Orc. He was the one who'd been taken captive by the betrayed and Bagabug. At this time, we need to be strong. Weakness cannot be tolerated amongst my ranks. Bagabug's forces, led by the Life Drinker, charged in. But they would crash like waves against the rocks that are my frontline defense. Hork the Judge, second only to Bagabug in strength. Enraged by almost everything, the orcs would have a hard time getting past him. And he was not alone. Backed up by Snafu, one of the original Bagas bandits. Brought back to life by Baga. And one of Bagabug's own bodyguards, the Devourer. The first group of orcs made it over the wall utilizing their Karagors. Soon after that, the perimeter was broken. In an act of sheer will, the Devourer took out the Olog who was leading the raid, the Life Drinker. But cut off the head of the Hydra, and two more grew back. The next wave brought many strong orcs. Tars the Vicious. Kuga the Shredder. Bastrix disagrees. All it did was singe his mind. We are soon. Don't you boys dare muck it up now! It became clear to F Asterix that Bagabuck had gone all out here. Just look at the sheer number of orcs he'd sent. The next point was soon taken. This bow's all over for the screaming, eh? Rash the Gut Ripper appeared, a particularly violent orc, known for ripping the guts from his enemy while they're still alive. By this point in the raid, Talion had regained some of his strength, 
he was able to mount a stand at the fifth point, where he came face to face with the assassin. You've done well with the horn, but a certain party thought it was time to call in a specialist. That would be me. Pull out all your shiny weapons. Go ahead. I'll smash them all to pieces. That's enough anticipation. Get him! Combat ensued against four high-level orcs while more ran in from the sides. Talion was overwhelmed, but he wouldn't back down. That's not what Bagger would have wanted. Plus, Talion has a freshing sword. A sword able to cause explosions when charged up. Perfect when taking on multiple captains at once. Perfect for this exact situation. While Talion kept fighting inside the walls, Grom kept the fight going outside, as he laid the Prowler to rest, agonizing pain on his face. Across the map, infighting was going on, with Luga taking out Tars the Vicious, but this is what you'd expect from a horde of orcs. Just then, the inner wall was breached, and the fearful entered, walking walking away from the, from the wall for some reason, because, uh... Because he's really cool and he, he's just, he's, he's leaving. He, he's going for some tea. I don't know what he's doing. It's all over, lads. Just have to mop up now. <coughs> anyway, Talion kept fighting inside the inner gates. With the literate one and Grom keeping some of the Ologs at bay. Talion fought it time to summon in his frog blood warrior. A warrior with poisonous frog blood running through his veins. More orcs assaulted this point. Using your cup, you've done nothing of stuff, but I will show you. You know your problem? Too many arms! I'm gonna fix it right now! The numbers are almost becoming overwhelming at this point for Talion. But Talion isn't a quitter. He utilized his freshing sword and his fire elven light attack. Cleansing the orcs. The surgeon, ironically being reduced to individual parts. But the danger wasn't over yet, Talion narrowly avoiding some throwing axes. But this only spurred Talion on, sending the Kingslayer sliding across the floor. The Shredder, terrified, trying to hide in the snow. Orcs were dropping left, right and center. Talion was starting to build up confidence. Thunderhead had had enough of Talion's antics. You. As if I didn't already have enough to do during this siege. He issued another siege on the wall, bringing in more orcs. Don't pat yourselves on the back. No. We still have the rest of the board to take, so get to it. Maku the Taskmaster, accompanied by various different Olog captains. Talion scrambled to defend the last point, but the orcs were strong and many in number. Powerful Ologs had also joined the fight. I'm gonna rip out your spine. It'll be a lot of work, so your screams better make it worth the effort. Better not try running away, or do not fancy a run. Oh, let's not drag this out. Battalion wasn't threatened. Sinking ten arrows into the great skull, he finally succumbed. But the Great was just a decoy. In the milliseconds it had taken Talion to sink that last arrow, the recently shamed Manhunter Orc stuck his blade into Talion's chest, causing him to collapse. He finished off Talion swiftly, 
Did the Manhunter orc turn on Talion after he was shamed? Or was he always a spy for Bagabug? With this death, Bagabug assumed control of the fortress. Along with Runny Bowels, a particularly disgusting orc, Poog the Bloodhound, a very devious orc, Manhunter, the betrayed necromancer, Grisha the Grog Burner, burned when experimenting with new variants of Grog, Mukyu the Taskmaster, the tactician for the Fit Soldiers, and finally Hoshkris, the Master Assassin. Talion has lost everything. He's lost Bag of the Alchemist, he's lost Bag of Bug, and now he's lost his fort. Who would answer the call and help him fight against Bagabug? Who would be crazy enough to do that? I headed to a new region in search of the Abandoned. He was currently laying siege to the Painseeker Fort for killing Baga. He had summoned Bagas from across the multiverse. It would take a lot to pry him away from this revenge mission. I set off in search of him. Eventually, as I neared towards this archway, I could sense his presence. No one gets through here without my say-so! And I don't intend on saying so! Whoa! Whoa! Whoa, whoa! Whoa. There he was, leading a force against one of the Painseeker Empathizers, the Abandoned, a truly skillful warrior, made even more dangerous by his Red Guard, an elite troop of orcs he handpicks and trains for years. They would die for him. But this wasn't all the Abandoned came with. He also came with the full power of two Bagas from the multiverse, Baga the Betrayed and Baga the Undead. Both variants of Baga, both with their own horrifying backstories. I then noticed a particularly creepy shrine. Was this a sign of the bad things that were to come? Is this what would be done to Talion? The Abandoned begun his charge with his elite Red Guard. The Baggers stayed back for now. If Asterix could send something evil. Man swine! Staking out your enemies, yeah, that's smart. Leaving yourself vulnerable to ambush? Less so. <laughs> Maku the Biter. One of my slave experiments gone wrong. I was experimenting with my poison armor. When orcs hit me, there's a massive chance they'll become poisoned. I was experimenting to see that if a grunt slash slave killed me while they were poisoned because of my armor, would they then be turned into a poisoned captain? As you can see, many orcs died during this experiment. One even died while I was downed. He couldn't muster up the final strength. A combination of the poison and an arrow to the ass. It was then Maku ran in. An oddly determined slave. The poison didn't seem to bother him. Even though he was being sick, he fought through the pain. A lesser orc would have died and succumbed to the poison, but not Maku. He fought through the pain, through the adversity. He clearly has a massive drive. I should have stopped the experiment right there and then, when I realised how strong he was. Recognised as a true warrior. What was created was a bitey, horrible monster of an orc. But I wasn't here for him. I was here for the Abandoned, who had come face to face with one of the Painseeker Empathizers. Maki tried to hit me, but I was focused. I dashed around to try and get the Abandoned's attention, but I only succeeded in getting the attention of another orc. So we have to defend ourselves against his Tark as well? What next? Crimp the Bold, a traitor to the orcs, an Empathizer of the Painless. The Abandoned was right to try and kill him. Just look at this chaos he started. His red soldiers setting a blaze to the enemy's troops. But would he listen to me if I helped him in this fight? All I'd achieved so far was summoning in another crazy orc to help out Crimp. I needed to get rid of the bold.
but before I could even help, the Abandoned was taking things into his own hands. He tackled Crimp, and while he was on the floor he planted a bomb directly into his mouth. Crimp was reduced to meat, reduced to appendages flying through the air. I could see that the Abandoned's strength had not diminished. It was then that the two baggers started to swarm Maku. Maki was fighting for his life, but there was no way he'd survive against two very strong baggers from different universes. His only chance was using fire. The undead are naturally terrified of flame, so this bagger fled. I decided to intervene and take out Maki myself. The fire that he'd used on the undead bagger had gotten out of control. I'd weakened him enough, and I thought the fight was over, until... Just when I thought Maki was going to have a burst of strength and kill me, the Abandoned snuck up behind him and dealt him the finishing blow. He slashed the biter, propelling his body into the wall at insane speeds. I was amazed at the strength that the Abandoned clearly still had. With the fight finished, I headed over to speak to the Abandoned. You're alive. The shame of defeat clings to you, Turk. And I don't want that stench on me. Nothing personal. Until the Abandoned was betrayed by one of his own men, a Bagger from the Machine Universe. He had the psychotic cunning of Bagger, with a body reinforced with steel. With the combined powers of Bagger the Betrayed and the Abandoned, we were able to take out the Machine very easily. Or at least that's what I thought, with the machine immediately getting enraged. The baggers do not take kindly to seeing other variants of themselves betray the cause. This led Bagger the Betrayed to swiftly dispense Bagger Justice, and hit him with the Bagger finisher move. From there it was only a matter of time. I decided not to intervene in this fight, as I knew it was the Abandoned and Bagger who needed to get their revenge on this traitor. And right when the machine was going to strike me, Bagger finished him off. With the fight finished, I was finally able to speak to the Abandoned. After telling him about the grievous betrayal of Bagabug, he agreed to take part in this war. After recruiting the Abandoned, I headed out to recruit another member of the team. This member was retired and didn't want anything to do with wars anymore. I decided to surprise him at his retirement home. But he already knew I was there, the Puppet Master, one of Bagger's original bandits. As soon as I got to speaking about what was going on, Bagabug turns up below the house. This was a golden opportunity to finally end this rebellion. I was going to assassinate Bagabug right here, right now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. But there was no hope. Bagabug was just too strong. I hadn't had time to build up my forces and train for him yet. He plunged his cursed daggers into me and raised me above his head. His eyes were filled with hate. I do not know what happened to the Puppet Master after this. I can only assume that Bagabug took him. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa, whoa! By the time I resurrected myself, Bagabug and the Puppet Master were gone. What horrors had befallen the Puppet Master? And would I actually be able to build up an army strong enough to take out Bagabug and reclaim my fortress? All of this will be revealed in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. You know, I'm gonna do more of these, more trailers, I'm having a great time with it. If you guys enjoyed it, you know, please like it, please leave a comment, you know, I pretty much read all the comments. If you guys missed my massive pit fight tournament, it is available right here, it's the whole tournament. Um, cut down from three hours, I cut out some of the boring bits and it's pretty much just the fights. The winner of this tournament gets their own emoji and uh, yeah, cheers guys, have a good one.